Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Awesome Gamer on TV, and today I'm going to be doing a modding tutorial for Minecraft. And the reason being is that if we if we scroll down to the third page of my YouTube channel videos, so these are like ancient videos. But basically, I had a video here that was called How to Mod Minecraft, and it was in August of 2016. It is currently now July of 2018, so it's been around two years since I've done that video. A lot of things have changed in my YouTube video. I do videos differently now. But actually, we're about to actually hit 85, uh, I mean, we've already hit 85 videos, my bad, but we're about to hit 100 videos. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the 100th video yet, but it's definitely going to be something uh, special. Now, actually, that might be a glitch with YouTube because how you see right here, it says 82, and then when I went to the next page, it said 85, so I'm not sure what's going on with YouTube right there, but just thought of something I'd point out, though, is that I haven't, I haven't done a tutorial since 2016, back then, Minecraft 1.9.4 was the latest version of the game, and then there's some more. Of my really old videos I tried to build um, this house I mean it came out okay and then I tried it and I did some uh, Call of Duty and then I did some two redstone tutorials let me know if you'd like to see more redstone tutorials those for uh, PS4 uh, but I play on Java edition now so things are quite different and then we're at our first video um, so yeah basically the first thing that um, you want to do for mods is there are many ways you can do this one if you're gonna create a mod pack yourself I highly recommend a tool called multi MC right here multi MC allows you to see the uh, sort of console of the game so you can see what happens with a certain mod like maybe you have a dimension ID that's being um, overwritten multiple times or something um, so basically multi MC I highly recommend multi MC for making your own mod packs um, I use it a lot for my own mod packs see I've got right here I've been testing my mod pack uh, this is gonna be uh, a video that we plan on doing around Christmas time um, and I'll explain that on the discord you should join the discord in the description but more more info and that will be on the discord you can get twitch which has uh, twitch also you know is allow allows you to watch your streamers and stuff I'm sure you all know what twitch is and basically it's it also has a little section where you can download mods for different games and they have a section for minecraft as well and um, they also there's AT launcher and Technic launcher those are the two older one so if you'd like to play some legacy packs then I recommend those two but if you want if you are making your own sort of mod pack just to have fun and you're not trying to be a big developer or anything it's just something to be quick and throw together really simple uh, then the first step you're gonna wanna do is come to Chrome you're going to want to come to the first link in the description which is this website and this gives you the option of downloading Forge Forge is what allows you to install mods to your game otherwise the game would not uh, recognize them and uh, yeah and you want the game to load it so Forge is how it tells the game to run it so basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to quit click download recommended latest it's okay if you do the latest but please do note if you have any errors I'm not gonna be able to help you because the latest most likely is in the development phase and they don't recommend they use it so that's why this one is recommended so you're just gonna click Windows installer you're gonna wait five seconds here sorry guys you're gonna click skip and then let this download uh, by the way if you're not on Windows you want to click the universal installer alright so we're gonna let this download here 
If it comes up with a message saying that you want to keep or discard, you're going to click keep because Forge is safe. Obviously, I wouldn't be telling you to download it if it was a virus. But I don't think it will prompt me. But if it does, just click um, keep. So you want to open it. And then let it load here. We're going to go ahead and close out of Chrome. We don't need it. Well, at least for this segment. So now this is the for the first part of this video. Here, we're going to do the client. And then later I'm going to show you how to do the server. So install client. Uh, install server or extract. Extract, I believe, is uh, how you make mods for yourself. Like it exports the uh, jar that you can put into your Minecraft jar. That's only if you're an advanced user, but if you're just a regular everyday user that doesn't know much about computers, then I'd recommend just clicking install client. Let it download all the libraries it needs. Mine has just installed really fast because I've installed this version of Forge multiple times trying to record this video. But basically, it might take a little bit. Just let it do its thing. And once it gets to this message here, you're just going to click OK. Now, Forge has been successfully installed to your launcher. So now we just want to come to your launcher just to verify that it's there. And you're going to want to scroll down until you see a Forge profile. It'll be like either Forge or FML if you're installing old versions. Here it is. Now, now you have Forge installed. Um, so basically what you want to do from here is find mods obviously because you're going to play with mods so you're going to want to come back to chrome uh, you're going to look up the mod that you want so in this case I'm going to do something simple like uh, let's say biomes oplenty which is a really good mod I highly recommend that you check that one out and you just want to put biomes are plenty and then the version of the game that you're trying to get the mod for, you're going to click enter. You're going to want to try to see if you can find a CurseForge link because you know these are 100% safe. Once you get here, you're just going to want to come over here to type. And it's going to sort it by release. You're going to click download on the latest Hi, the highest file which means it's the latest version that's their release because betas or well betas are basically just like a test release of a new release that they're planning on releasing I don't know how many times I'm gonna say release and here you go that's the message I was talking about earlier if this comes up you're just gonna to wanna to click keep because they are safe I can guarantee it I've installed plenty of mods from them in the past and as you can see my computer is still working just fine once it's downloaded, you just want to drop it to your desktop or somewhere that you know you'll be able to access it later because we need to put it somewhere else. Now you might be thinking, okay, the simple solution would be just to do this, drag it over and open with Minecraft Launcher. That would be a no. It's not going to work. So now that you've got the mod that you want, um, you can install the way you put it in your Minecraft folder. Is you want to come down here. You want to use the either you can type in run in the start menu, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Windows R. You want to type in percent app data percent in this box. You're going to click OK. This will take you to your roaming folder. You want to double click on this thing that says dot Minecraft, and then you're going then. You're going to want to create a new folder and call it mods, all lowercase, but I've already got one, so I'm not going to create this. No. Delete. So I've already got a mods folder right here. Now, the way I highly suggest sorting this is by version. So if you put 1.7.10 then forge 1.7.10 notes to read from this folder and not any of these 
that's how I highly recommend setting up these folders so then since we did 1.12.2 we already have a mods in here we're gonna go ahead and take these out just for the purpose of this video so now that you've got your biomes of plenty here you're just gonna to want to drop drag and drop it to this 1.12.2 folder and you're done so this is the client part finished so then you're going to come to your Minecraft launcher, you're going to click play on the Forge profile. Let it load. So while it's loading, I might want to bring up that you want to join the Discord and the link in the description because I'm going to be doing stuff um, there. Like I'm working on a mod myself for Forge. It's definitely not, definitely a work in progress right now. It's not, it's nothing, nothing that's going to be released to the public yet. But right now, it's, a, it's just a work in progress. So you're going to let this load. Now your screen may look a little bit different. Uh, the reason why is that I've customized my forge a little bit to look like that. It actually looks pretty cool. So we're going to let it load here and I'll be right back when it's done. Alright, so it is now done. And just to clarify that your mod has loaded, you're going to come over here and it's right here you can see that it is successfully installed it is sitting in the mods folder and if we come to single player just to prove to you that it works we have tons of worlds here uh, but I'm just gonna create a new one and I'm just gonna call this biomes o plenty now I'm gonna warn you anything that changes the uh, adds blocks and changes the way things generate can uh, the worlds that are generated like that cannot be loaded in vanilla Minecraft the reason being is that vanilla Minecraft freaks out because it's a different gener uh, shoot gener it generates land differently to the way Minecraft does so never ever load this modded world in vanilla Minecraft always load it with the mods that you started off with or if you had a couple of mods that's fine but don't ever like remove mods like don't ever remove biomes of plenty if you set it to the biomes of plenty world type just clear that up so we're going to create a new world uh, also it has a seed feature just like any other minecraft world that you would uh, generate and basically the seed is what number the world starts off with when it goes to generate so we're in the world here and as you can see it's kind of lagging a little bit because I'm not recording with like a gaming setup like a gaming recording setup here but you get the general idea it is gotten modded stuff obviously this is not in the game normally this isn't and if we just go ahead and open up the land allow sheets Set game mode to creative slash game mode. If I can spell slash game mode one, I could still spell. And you'll see here in the creative tabs, we can go to another page, and here it is. So the mod is successfully loaded. So now we have gotten a client set up. Now things are a bit different on the server side. Let me show you. Alright, so um, once you're back to your desktop after exploring with the client, so the client um, might be the only thing that you want if you're playing by yourself. And there are other tricks to make a single player world available over the internet. I'll probably do a different video to show you how to do that. It's actually very simple. But basically, when you want a server which this in this case you'd want a server most likely if you're hosting a server that plays more than eight players anything along those lines because servers allow you to um, allocate uh, more RAM to them and you could have a dedicated computer to that server which will allow it to run great and then you could hook up uh, you could join it through a different computer and you can actually port forward it or use two tricks I'm going to show you in this video that uh, that allow it to be connectable anywhere in the world. 
So basically, remember that installer from earlier. We're going to have to go back to it. So let's come over here, come to downloads, and you're going to want to get this installer right here. You're going to double click on that, let it load. Now remember where it said install client or install server or extract. Well, this time we're going to want to click install server. In this part, you're going to need a sort of server directory. Now, I do not recommend putting it straight up on your desktop, like each server on your desktop, because it'll clutter up your desktop fast, uh, depending on how many servers you have. So what I've done is if I come to OBS over here, and I show my second monitor. So, hold on, give me a second here. Let me, if I go to display capture, let me come to settings. I'm going to change it to my second display. Click OK. All right. So now we're on our second display. I've created a folder that has my Minecraft servers in it. And then if I show you, it has all these servers in it. I'm just going to go ahead and come in my tutorial server. And we're just going to delete all of this. So delete. Alright, so now it's empty. So now we've got a folder created for our sort of server so now let me switch it back to the, my first display main display and basically what you want to do is when you click install server it's not going to let you install it to your .minecraft folder so you're going to have to click these three dots let it load here and you're going to want to try you're going to look in so desktop for me you're going to basically navigate to that folder Minecraft servers tutorial modded server and then click open and down here just to clarify make sure that it has gotten to the right directory in my case it has so you're just going to click OK it's going to do, it's going to do everything that it needs to uh, and then you're just going to let it do its thing let it download the server and then I'll be right back when that part is done Alright, so we're back now and it has finished and you're just going to want to click OK. Now, if we go back to that folder, and I'm not going to show you my second desktop again, um, just because I've, you already know that I put it there, so you're going to navigate back to that folder. Now, this is the part where it's kind of optional. highly recommend you double click on the forge.jar first. The reason being is because you have to accept a EULA agreement which is end user license agreement that's what EULA stands for um, and basically if you double click on it with a bunch of mods installed it'll have to load all of those mods just to crash and so you could accept the EULA so now you're just gonna go ahead and accept the EULA pretty simple you're going to come to this mods uh, folder. You're going to put in the mods that you've installed. Let's say now that I want a new mod. And I've decided that I want a mod that allows me to see my map. You can go ahead and install mini map mod, but I've already got one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So basically, what we gotta do is come to your Minecraft folder again. So do this, this, come to your .minecraft folder, mods, 1.0.2, and put the minimap mod in there. Now, you're also gonna need it for the server too, but this is where I need to explain something to you guys so I'm gonna go ahead and just use the shortcut that I have on my other desktop for my dot minecraft folder this time then come back to mods and 1.0.2 now this is where it gets a little complicated so you need to uh, like try not to lose me here we are not gonna put in this mini map mod to the server the reason being is that the minimap mod is a client side mod. Client side mods all, uh, just rely on a client 
and do not need to be installed on a server in order for you to be able to use them. So that's something to keep in mind. Do uh so anything like a mini map, uh not enough items, stuff like that is a client side mod. Now most of the time uh they will tell you if it's a client side mod or server side. If it doesn't, that's kind of sad because it should. All right, so once you're done, once you've gotten this set up, you're going to want to do something else now that we need to do. So you're going to click new, click text document. You're going to name this like run or launch or whatever you want. I'm going to do launch. You're going to come over here and change it to .bat. Now note, in order for this to work, you're going to, on Windows 10, you're going to come to View, and you got to come over here and check File Name Extensions. Now, once you've created this .bat file, you're going to click Edit. Now, this is using a Java command line to run this file. So, Java just states that you're calling upon Java to run something. Hash jar tells you it's a jar file, tells Java it's a jar file, and handle it like a, it should for a jar file. You're going to want to do another hash. Oh, well, actually, you don't do a hash. I believe you don't do a hash. And basically, what you're going to do just come down here, right click, click rename, click copy, and paste it. And then you're going to add .jar to the end. And then now these, we need a couple more arguments after this. So after this argument, uh, you need to figure out the architecture of your computer. So basically, um, the architecture depends on what your CPU runs 32 bit or 64 bit. Mine is 64 bit, so I'm going to put D64. And then you're going to want to put O true. Now, this is because if you put O false, cracked accounts can join your server. Cracked accounts are basically accounts that own Minecraft, but they didn't pay for it legit. That's what cracked accounts stand for. And basically, uh, you don't want those joining your server because that could mean that your server gets hacked and it's not a fun time. So I highly recommend that you put O true at the end. And then I also recommend that you put no GUI. And then now you're going to want to put pause down here. And the reason being is if the server crashes for some reason... Uh, you can see the log. You can scroll up in the little command prompt to see what the log says, and you can figure out what the problem is, and it's really simple. So now you're just going to click Control S, or you can come up here and click File Save. Next out of this. Now, oh wait, I forgot one argument actually. My bad. You're going to want to put XMS. This stands for RAM, so basically this is allocating RAM to the server. XMS, so we want at least a gig to the server, so we're going to put 1024M. The reason being is that it runs, you can either put M or you can put 1G. They both mean the same thing. But basically 1024 megabytes is a gigabyte. Remember that. So that means minimum RAM, which means it that's how much it can it cannot go any lower than one gig. And if we come up here, XMX means max RAM. We're just gonna put 2048, which is two gigs. M. So now you just want to set. Uh, now you want to save this file again. You just want to double click on it. And let it do its thing. Launch up the server. It's gonna launch up the server, and uh, yeah, I'll be right back.
Well, actually, no, I won't be right back. It'll, it should be done any minute now. So it's currently generating a world. Now I'm also going to show you a little trick for Vibes of Plenty. You want to type in stop because this is using the default settings. Click any key. Now you're going to come to server.properties. You're going to set these. So I'm going to set max players to 1. And then MOTD is like the little message that appears under your server. So we're just going to put tutorial. And then uh, uh, you can change these settings right here. It does not matter what you change them to. Just do not set this past 64 million if you're 64 bit, and do not set this past 32 million if you're 32 bit. Now this is where biomes of plenty comes in. Level type equals biomes. If you want it to use biomes of plenty, then you want to put biomes op. And if you have any other sort of world gen mods out there, then you're going to want to go ahead and look up what the code is for it to generate on that ser on the server. Whitelist a lot basically means uh, people can only join the server if they're whitelisted. Uh, and then O mode, that's the online mode right here. Uh, enable command block, uh, we're going to set this to true so we can run commands. We're going to set to game mode 1. And that's basically all we need to do. So, file save. And then we're just going to go ahead and delete this world because it generated a vanilla world the first time. And you're just going to click launch.bat. So in theory, this time it'll generate a Biomes of Plenty world. And we can verify it once the game loads up. So it's going to load up the server. Once the server is done, uh, we'll go ahead and load up the client. I'll be right back when both of those things are done. Alright, so my game and the server have officially loaded, and I can prove that the Xero Minimap mod is loaded. So basically, you want to be able to join the server by typing in a certain code called localhost, and uh, we'll make sure that it connects this time. So it basically, it, it says compatible FML server, 2 milliseconds, because it's literally running on the same machine, and it says 0 out of 1, and it has my message of the day right there. So you're going to join it. Now, to clarify, if you want to be able to run commands and stuff on the server, you're going to want to come down here and you're going to click, uh, you're going to uh, do op, and then your username. In this case, my username is Casey11405. Alright, so I'm opt now. And if you see the little biome, you can see the little biome under my uh, little mini map and as you can see we are on a brush land now and we can we can get by the plenty stuff we can place it down and break it and obviously these blocks are not normally in the game so that's going to do it for uh, this tutorial uh, also I forgot to mention that at the beginning this tutorial is based upon assuming that you already have Java if you do not know uh, well if you do not have Java uh, there are other tutorials on the internet that will show you exactly how to do that. But I want to thank you all for watching this video. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos like this one. Also, I'd like to mention that videos will not be coming out quite as often because I have football practice now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Excuse me. And um, just life, you know, football practice and... I mean, I, when I come home from football practice, I really do not feel like making a video. Uh, so, yeah. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. Um, and see you all later. Peace. Wait, hold the phone. Not peace yet. Because I forgot to do one thing. And that is to close off the server. I also forgot to tell you um, how to pull forward. My bad, guys. I'm sorry. I <laughs> left you with a false intro. Um. What is that dot idea folder doing? Hold on, let me fix this real quick. Alright, so let me go to my mod. I need to put this back in my mod folder because it needs to stay in. It needs to be in there.
dot idea. Come back in there. All right, sorry guys about that. Yeah, but I completely brain farted and I forgot that I was supposed to tell y'all how to port forward this thing. So one way is to download something called ngrok. So basically, once you've installed the .exe file, you're gonna want to go navigate to where you've installed it. In my case, I've installed it on my desktop. So C users, and then my user, and then desktop. All right. So once we're there, you're gonna type in ngrok.exe. TCP. TCP is a uh, you got two choices between protocols. You got a TCP protocol and a UDP protocol. Minecraft uses TCP, so just remember that. Uh, and then you're going to want to put 25565. 25565 is the norm, uh, normal port that Minecraft servers use, and you can change it in the server.properties file. And um, yeah, so you just want to click enter now. It's going to give you an IP address. You just want to do not copy this TCP slash slash part at the beginning. You just want to copy from here to here. You want to copy this part. Send that to your friends and they will be able to join the server. And you can just press Control C to quit. But I'm going to press Control C so I can copy that. Now you just want to come, just to verify that it's working, come to Chrome. And Dinnerbone, thanks to Dinnerbone, has supplied us with a server status check. So uh, you just look up Minecraft. My bad. Minecraft server status. Here it is. And then you're just gonna paste your IP in. Check it. Now this is not going to work because it's a forge server, but I can verify it will work and I will show you in game as well. So I'll be, oh, that's right. <laughs> Derp, I wasn't even running the server. Sorry guys. Jeez, I need to think. Basically, once you've gotten this, you're just going to go ahead and run the server again. My bad. And uh, come so come to your server tutorial. Launch the server. I thought it didn't work because it was a modded server. My bad, guys. Total brain fart. Now let this load. I've had two brain farts this video. This is not good. So we're gonna let this load up again, and then we're gonna come back to Chrome, and then we're just gonna go to my recently closed tabs history. There we go. We're gonna go back to that. GG. Paste. Oops. <laughs> Not bad. Copy the wrong thing. Control C. And check. Yep, yeah, there we go. Now it's worked. It's working now. And it has, in fact, proved that the server is up. And it's working. Now, for whatever reason, if that doesn't work, and what you're going to do is you're going to come down to your start menu, look up control panel. You're going to want to come to firewall. Now it should have actually came up with a message saying that, um, uh, do, would you allow connections? But if it doesn't, then you basically just want to go, uh, go ahead and unblock the port 25565 and inbound and outbound rules hopefully you know how to do that if not I kind of can't help you because I'm not gonna do that this video would be way too long if I did that so ngrok is one way the other way is um I believe uh hold on let me think of this other way real quick and I'll be right back alright so the other way is actually through Hamachi I just realized that um third brain fart this video so you're going to want to download Hamachi if you want to do this. Here, once you uh, start up Hamachi fresh, you're going to click this power button. But instead it's going to prompt you to log in, just create an account through them. Um, and then what you want to do 
is create a new network and I've, I've created one right here and you're just wanna, gonna go ahead and set a password for it and everything and uh, yeah and then now you're just gonna want other people to download Hamachi and join the server with that name and yeah alright so uh, this tutorial has been a little long and also I'm also I'm gonna show you a final little trick I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of Hamachi final little trick so we're just gonna stop the server my bad stop the server there's a way you can actually play with your friends if you do not want a server because servers take up quite a bit of your computer's resources so we're gonna real quickly load up my game and I'll be right back sorry there's so many cuts in this video but uh, basically yeah that <laughs> we kinda we kinda need to it's very necessary Alright, so my bad, guys. Yeah, second time trying to record this clip, uh, but the game is loaded, like I said, um, in the last time. Basically, what happened, the reason why I had to delete my last clip was because I was a derp and showed my external IP address, and obviously, I cannot upload my external IP address to YouTube because I will get hacked. So, like I was trying to say last time I recorded this clip, um, is that once you've loaded into the world, you're just going to simply pause, open the LAN change it to whatever you want start now you're gonna um, unpause and you're gonna come to your windows CMD let it load CD C users KC desktop and grok.exe TCP and instead of putting 25565 you want to put the port that the game gave you right here. So in this case, it was 49354. Click enter. Now you're just going to go ahead, copy this, give it to your friend. So come back to that website that I was showing you. And I'm also going to put it on my second monitor just so I don't accidentally leak my external IP address again. Um, so let it load here. All right, so let me scoot this over to my other monitor, so I don't expose my external IP address again. Once it loads, because I do not, I don't want anyone malicious getting my external IP address and hacking me. That would not be good. It's not fun. Uh, trust me, you do not want to get stuck with that. Why is my Google Chrome not loading? Please load already. Thank you. All right, I'm moving this over here. I'm going to that same website. All right, so I'm letting it load here. Once, all right, so once you're here, just go ahead and paste that same IP that it sped out. You're gonna click check, and it worked. There you go. Players online, one of eight and it does not know the software because it's forged and it has mods so yeah that does work and um, yeah, I just now proved it that it does work and that's another way if you don't want to host a server just to play with your friends alright so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed today's video leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more awesome videos like this one also I'd like to note that more uh, videos will be coming out uh, not quite as often as they were in the past two months I would say uh, just because I've got football practice, stuff like that, and when I come home from football practice, I really do not feel like playing Minecraft and trying to record it, or trying to record any game, really. Uh, so, yeah, I, just um, be sure to join the Discord in the description, and yeah, so see you all in the next video. Probably going to record a second one for today. I guess today is my last chance to record because I have football practice in the next two days. I'm not sure about after that. Uh, so yeah, see you all later. Peace.